series in Ephesians chapter 3. Let's see if I can get my slides on for... Which one is it now? That one. Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> and I'm going to read verse 16 to verse 19. I titled the sermon Deeper, Going Deeper. And um, it's not a mystical thing. I'm not to, going to ask us to jump into waters deeper and things like that. But you'll understand what it means as we continue. So let's read together from verse 16. And it says that according to the riches of his glory... He may grant you to be strengthened with power through the His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, breadth what is the length and the height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let's pray. Lord, we commit this time to you. My prayer this morning is that you will speak to us through your word. My prayer this morning for each one of us, that we will understand, and as the title of the sermon says, that we will go deeper with you. And I pray that you will just help us, Lord, in our weakness, that you will give us the strength. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. So I'm continuing in the prayer that Paul prayed. Now, we started last week kind of looking at some of the things he said. Let me put on my mic. Sorry. I forgot to put this on. But I, you can all hear me. One, two. Is that better? Ah, okay. I don't have to scream at you. <laughs> okay, so Paul is praying for the believers. And... Um, he prays that God will give them strength, that the strength will be according to the riches of his glory. And, uh, and just to remind us, uh, the riches not out, we not, he's not asking us to be strengthened out of the riches, but according to the riches. Now that is a different story. Um, he prays that we will be strengthened by the, with the power through the spirit in our inner being. Um, that is our the center of our being, we, can, we refer to our, our spirit, our new man. We can refer to it as the heart of man, the, the Christ is, and with the spirit, well, the Christ lives in us through his spirit, but that we will be strengthened in the inner man through the power of the spirit. Now, why do we need strength? And I'm just going to reflect a little bit back on what I said last week, just to connect these two sermons. The, um, the reason why we need strength, Number one is that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. That's the one we looked at last week. That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. And we spoke about this. Paul is not praying and asking that Christ will come live in us. He's not asking that. In fact, he's praying for believers who already has Christ in them. So he's praying that Christ will dwell. And we looked at the word dwell in Greek is literally means to settle down, to feel, to, to, to um, settle down in our hearts. In other words, to feel at home. So the question I was asking to each one of us is, is Christ at home in your life? And I'm asking this to true believers who have Christ already in their lives. It's a different story to move into a house and to feel at home. Amen? So that's the question we need to ask. Now, the second reason Paul prays for strength is verse 18 and verse 19. And we'll spend some time on this also this morning. Verse 18 and 19, so that we may comprehend, comprehend and know the love of Christ. Do we fully understand and know the love of Christ? Do we fully comprehend? And he also says that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. 
But let me quickly, before we look at that, just go back to number one. just want to say something about faith. I mean, it says that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. When he says that, Paul is not referring to that initial act of faith, the day when you trusted Jesus to be your Savior, when you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, trusted him, and as chapter 1 says, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. He's not referring to that initial act. He's actually referring to the continuous act of belief in your spiritual life. The continuous act to believe in Christ and His Word. And yes, we must trust in Jesus, believe for salvation. And at that moment, Christ comes to take residence in our lives through His Spirit. And that is how our new life starts. That's how we begin, by faith. By faith. We are saved by faith. From Ephesians 2 verse 9. But faith is not just a once act. Once off act. Faith is a continuous act. It's something we do every day. It's something we live by every day. And that's what Paul is referring to. Christ dwells in our hearts day by day through faith. And that's also that scripture that says we walk by faith. Faith. It's not the journey starts by faith, but we should continue to believe and trust in Jesus every single day. So Christ dwells in us day by day through faith, walking by faith. And yes, by faith we understand, we accept Jesus who died for us. We accept him as our Lord and Savior. He saved us, he gave us new life. But by faith, daily, we appropriate uh, is it your after work? Appropriate all the spiritual blessings. So Paul was talking about in chapter 1 and 2, and I said chapter 1, 2, 3 is the theological part. And we've been in the theology kind of for a few weeks. But when we get to chapter 4, it's going to hit the road, the practical stuff. How does all these things we've learned apply to our lives, to our everyday single life? But now before he makes that transition from the, the truth to the practice, He's praying for them that they will be strengthened in the inner man so that they will appropriate by faith these things in their lives, these spiritual things. I can tell you so many times how spiritually rich and wealthy you are, but if you don't appropriate it, you're going to be poor. You understand that? That's what Paul's desire is for each one of us. Not to just to play in the shallow waters, but to go deeper. And that's what we will talk about. Now, how did faith come to us in the beginning? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the, the Word of God. So how does faith come to me every day? The Word of God. The Word of God. And you see, the, the question I want to put forward to you is, do you struggle in your daily walk by faith? I think I know what the problem is. I think I know what the problem is. Now, we enter into this enjoyment of the indwelling, um, Christ's indwelling through faith. But we must practice His presence every day in our lives through faith. And remember that faith is not just is not disconnected from obedience. James says that faith without works is dead. So true faith is that believes is faith that obeys. And um, if you look at all other religions in the world. Other religions demand that you do things. But if I talk about Christianity and if I ask you, define Christianity to me, what is Christianity? I would say in simple words, Christianity means Christ in us. Because Christ is the end of the law. Christ is the whole law and everything that it encompasses and what it means is comprised in Christ, in Him. And the Christian faith, faith is this, Christ 
in us. And as Colossians says in chapter 1, verse 27, to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the Christian faith. Christ dwelling in our lives through faith. That's how you overcome sin. And we talk, we'll get to the details and the finer details. I love, I always go, that's, we're going to go a little bit deeper this morning. Is that fine? Okay. So have you got your gear on? Ready to jump? Okay. <laughs> well, let's go. So if, I'm, uh, um, if someone asks you, what is Christianity Christ in us? Christianity is about a personal relationship with Christ. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And it is from this relationship, Christ dwelling in you through faith, that obedience flow, that love flow. It is from this, it is because of my love for Him that I don't want to sin. And I've always said this, and I believe this, that if you want to overcome sin in your life, you must love Christ. Because your love for Him is the best motivation for not sinning. It's the best motivation for holy living. Now, let's read again Ephesians 3.17, and I'll get to the first point now. It says, So that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Now, for the young people, rooted, they, that's the name of the young people. I have the Greek word for them. Rizzo. Okay. So you can call yourself Rizzo. Rooted. Anyway, so rooted and grounded in love. And you see, love is the result of Christ dwelling in your heart. If Christ dwells in your heart, love will be the soil where you are rooted in. See, we are rooted and grounded in love. Love will be the soil, the very soil in which you will be rooted to grow spiritually. Love will become the motive and the, the motive of all service to God. Why do you want to serve God? Why do you want to do ministry? What is the motivation by it? anything you do for the Lord? If it's not love, it's legalism. Love will cause all fruitfulness, and we know that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is the soil in which our obedience is rooted, Christ in our hearts. And love will become the foundation upon which our lives are built. Now, just to mention, when we talk about we are rooted in love, we also say the same, in the same thing, Christ is love. And then we can also say Christ, we are rooted in Christ because it's His love. Now, the first point I want to talk about this morning is being rooted and grounded in love. Now, Paul mixes two um, metaphors here in this portion. And he does the same kind of thing if you go to 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 when he says the following. He says, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field and you are God's building. You see, two metaphors. The metaphor of agriculture being rooted, being the field of God, and then secondly, architecture, being a building, being grounded. That's the two metaphors he's using. Now let's look at the first one, being rooted in Greek, meaning rizoo, and it means to be strengthened with roots. Figuratively, we would say it's someone that becomes stable, he's firmly fixed. Firmly fixed. So when you are firmly rooted in love, you know what that means? It means you cannot be uprooted. 
It means that you cannot be pulled out. You all know the scripture in Romans 8, 38, 39 that says, For I am sure that neither nor death, nor life, nor angels, or rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, including yourself, will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I believe in eternal security. Because if I am in Christ and He's in me, I'm rooted in His love and I'm rooted in Christ. Nothing can separate me from Him. Nothing. And if you are firmly established in Him, nothing can change that. Now, being grounded is the Greek word themelio. Themelio. Oh. <laughs> Two O's at the back. Themelio. Familio. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how do I say it. That's the verb basically of, or the adjective of familios, meaning foundation or fundamental. So familio means to be grounded securely or deeply firmed or founded. Being grounded in Christ on the rock. In this picture of a house which is so firmly fixed on a foundation and it cannot be moved by winds or floods or any storm as what jesus said in matthew 7 24 and 25 the same idea when he says that you are built on the house on your house on the rock and when the rain comes and the flood comes and the wind blows against it the house will not fall that's the idea matthew 7 24 both being rooted grounded also i want to point this out is in the perfect tense perfect tense means permanent permanent it underscores our eternal security as believer that our salvation is permanent and complete but now because you are rooted in his love that roots must grow deeper and I, I read this, this in, um, well, I'll quote this next point. I'll quote what um, Rearsby said on this. But I, I think I've got the quote here of MacDonald from the Levis Bible commentary. He says, to be rooted and grounded in love is to be established in love as a way of life. So you're not only once fixed in Christ, and that's it, going to heaven. I can do what I want to do. No. It's a way of life the life of love is a life of kindness selflessness brokenness meekness it is a life of christ finding expression in the believer i'm rooted in christ and now his life becomes an expression in my life it's expressed in my life his love that brings me brings me to the second point and that's going deeper going deeper should the roots stay shallow or what's it after it's superficial or shallow or should it go deeper and also warren Risby, when he says and i want to quote this he says when they built a building his first build, or second building he says in my second building program we had to spend several thousand dollars taking soil tests because we were building over a, an old lake bed for weeks, the men were laying out and pouring the, the, um, the footings. One day I complained to the architect and he replied, Pastor, the most important part of this building is the foundation. If you don't go deep, you don't go high. If you don't go deep, you can't go high. And, I'm, and I want you to think about this. I want you to contemplate this. Let, let those words sink in this morning. If you don't go deep, you can't go high. So if God's love is the soil in which we are rooted, firmly fixed, the deeper our roots grow in His love, the more we express and we, the more we go higher in his love. You see, go, going deeper, growing deeper into the love of God, 
Just as a tree is a living, growing organism, the Christian life is a living, growing organism, growing relationship with God and with others. Rooted in His love is the result, the results in our growth in love. For Him and for others. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. And we know Galatians 5 says, if we walk in the Spirit, we will have the fruit of the Spirit. The love will manifest in our lives. The opposite is also true. If you don't walk in the Spirit, if you don't grow in the love of God, if you don't go deeper, it is an indication that you're not walking in the Spirit. If there's no love, for, your, for God and for your brothers. It's an indication that at best you are a babe in Christ. At worst you might not even be a genuine Christian. Because the love of God is for brothers. Is the fruit of, of a true believer. If there is to be a life that glorifies God. A life that exalts Christ. A life that is filled with all the fullness of God, your roots has to go deeper into the love of God. And listen, it is easy to be complacent in your Christian life. It is easy to come to a place and say, yes, but I'm okay. It's good to have all these spiritual disciplines in my life. I, I, I do my quiet time. Check. I I read my Bible, check. I go to church, check. Uh, I give to the Lord's Word, check. But you see, the problem comes in when all these things are just a routine. It's just a routine. And even though Paul, and study, if you study Paul's life, and after he served the Lord for so many years, and, after, and, and, and God used him mightily through through um, the miracles and the signs, even though he was at one stage and we read he was caught up in third heaven. What an experience that should have been or must have been. He did not rest in those experiences. After the so many years, I think 25 years, he wrote to the Philippian church this follow, the following words. Listen to what he said. He says, not that I have already obtained this. Or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, straining toward what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God reveal all that, reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. So here's the lesson. No matter where you are in your spiritual life at this moment, no matter where you are spiritually, you all you should always desire to go deeper. With God. And since God is infinite, you also become to the conclusion, I, I will, I've, never, I've not obtained it. I've not been there. I'm not perfect, but I press on. I continue. I grow. And the third point, there's no excuse. You only have to be a minister for 20 years, 21 years, and you know all the excuses. <laughs> There's no excuse. Listen to what he says, verse 89, let me go there. He says, may that we may have strength to comprehend with all the saints, that is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. These words underline the fact that all of this to comprehend with all not some of the saints with all the saints what is the breadth the length the depth and the height and to know the love of god or christ that surpasses us to be filled with just a little bit of god is that what it says 
to be filled with all the fullness of God. These words underline the fact that all of this is a possibility for every single believer. It's a possibility for all Christians. Yes, for each one of you. Each one of you. And Paul is not writing this to, to just some very exceptional Christians or people. He's, not, he's writing this to the Ephesian or ordinary Christians, like you and me. He's writing this to them, ordinary people. He prays for them that they will experience all the spiritual blessings he's been talking about for the last two, three chapters. That they will experience all of that, leading up, obviously, to the ultimate climax of being filled with all the fullness of God. I don't know what that means. But should we be, should we be complacent? Should we accept, no, nah, it's okay, I'm a Christian, I'm happy, I'm doing my thing, I'm going on. I like to play in the water, shallow waters. In fact, this is not just possible, it's, it's a duty. But there's, there's a reason why we need to be strengthened in the inner man, in the inner being. Because, and I want, and I want you to see this, this is probably the most important part of the sermon, is that the natural man, the flesh, the sinful nature, whatever you define it, you cannot attain this in your own strength. You cannot attain this in your own strength. You, we need to be strengthened in the inner man by the Spirit. And that is what Paul's praying for you, for, for the believers of Ephesus, and praying for us, so that we will be strengthened, because in ourselves we cannot know, comprehend the length, the breadth, the height, the depth of Christ's love. We can't, we can't in our own strength. Many Christians, when they read, and I'm saying today, I'm talking about today, many Christians, when they read Ephesians, specifically the first three chapters, they would say, you know what? I don't understand it. And I think there's a few books in the Bible that they also do say the same thing, like Revelation. We've been studying it. It's a, it's a difficult book. But you know what? Does it mean we should just leave it? Do you think God put it there for a reason? That is why their minds must, that's why our minds must be strengthened. If you, if you study the Bible, you open the Bible, the Word of God, and you don't understand, ask the Spirit of God to give you understanding, to give you strength in your mind. Because we are meant to understand it. We are meant to understand the Word of God. Verse 18 says that we may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of God that surpasses knowledge, human knowledge. Now, I don't know about you, and I'm just saying this about me, but maybe it's the same with you. I don't know if you found that when you read light literature, or the newspaper, or you watch a movie or a TV series for hours. Some of you watch all these series, five episodes in one night. <laughs> okay, one, one people, one guilty. Watching all these, uh, the, the, these for hours, but you, have, you don't have the difficulty to concentrate. Have you found that? But when you pick up your Bible, and you start reading and studying the Bible, your mind starts wandering off in different directions. Now, I'm saying this because that's what's happening with me every week when I prepare for school. I start preparing, and soon my mind wanders off. And I have to discipline them. I need to get back. Many times, many times, 
it's, it's like my mind seems to be elsewhere. And I said to myself, I don't understand why it's so difficult to prepare a sermon for me every single week. All these other pastors seem to look, may make it look so easy. It's really, it's a struggle. But the question is why? Why is it a struggle? The natural man. And you need to see this. You need to acknowledge the flesh, the sinful nature. Listen, there will always be the old man, the sinful nature, the flesh, that will resist the bond. I want to go to the church that makes me feel happy and motivates me. But as soon as we go deeper, no, 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 no. No, no, that's too much. I don't like to feel uncomfortable. And, I, and I've said it many times in this church. Some parts of the Bible has got teeth, you know. But you. But it's necessary for your growth. It's necessary for your spiritual growth. And yes, they, you need to acknowledge the fact that in you there's the old man that resists reading the Bible. Resists praying. Resists standing up on a Sunday morning and preparing and getting ready for church. And I'm not pointing fingers for the people online. I'm just saying it's so much easier to stay in bed. Because your flesh says, ah, get tired. Just an advice, just some advice I always gave to the young people when I was a youth pastor. Don't go Saturday night out and play until late. Because you need to be awake Sunday morning when the pastor preaches. He's not in us In our nature, we resist sharing the gospel. Have you been so prepared? Man, you studied everything. You're going to share the gospel. You know all the points. And I teach this in the membership class, the five points on the, the gospel on the tips of your finger. And so that you can know you've got the gospel in your hand everywhere you go. And you're ready. You're going to share the gospel. And when you get into that moment, bam, your, 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 your nature kicks in. No, I don't know what he's going to say. Maybe he's going to reject me. No, no, no. You need to realize and acknowledge that the old man will resist when you want to go deeper into the love of God, to take the roots deeper. It's not easy always. But you know why? We need to be strengthened by the power of the Spirit because of that. Because of that. Now, some Christians say the following, and I'm, I might be stepping on a few toes now, but it's true. We need to acknowledge this. Some say, or would say, you know what? I'm just a plain, simple Christian. Um, I've got my testimony. I help out now and then simple things in the church or simple things in, out there. But don't ask me to understand and comprehend the deep things of God. Don't concern me with doctrine and theology. I just believe the simple gospel. Now, yes, we, we should believe the simple gospel. But do you think God wants to keep us there? What they actually mean by this is saying, I'm not going to make the real effort to understand the Bible. You, you see, the Bible... And, and I believe this was not written for doctors and professors and those with degrees. The Bible was written for normal, ordinary Christians like you. Written for us. And then for, Christ, for a Christian to say that he's not bothered with understanding the breadth and the depth and the height and, and the, the, the length of God's love, to know his love more and to go deeper because his mind is too tired and too busy daily. I've got so many problems that he is not a natural reader and he's not a natural thinker and he cannot understand these things. So, you know what? He's not prepared to make the effort to understand the Bible. You're in fact denying scripture. That's what you're doing. 
Paul prays that we will be strengthened. And you need to understand God gives you, grants you the strength, not, accord, not from the riches of his glory, but according to the riches of his glory, so that you can comprehend with all the saints. All the saints. So don't be left out. Pray that God will give you the strength to comprehend. And that's what I pray for. You know, sometimes the Bible is, I go into the scriptures and my mind goes off and yes, get, try to get back, especially when I had COVID. Man, look, that first week I tried to prepare my sermon and then suddenly I, I wake up, I fell asleep. And then my mind is there and my mind is there. It was completely, it was so difficult. But the fact is we need to pray for the strength that the Spirit gives us to give us understanding. And let me say this. Intellectual, intellectual lethargy. Did I say it right? Lethargy. Okay, there's no love. My father says lethargy. Okay. Lizelle said lethargy. I choose my wife. So. <laughs> intellectual lethargy is probably the greatest sin of Christians. They never grow in their knowledge of God or in the word of God. And no wonder they have doubt and struggle to believe and trust daily. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know what I've discovered the last, well, as every week as I study and if I prepare some, what I've discovered is that it is in the detail of the scripture. That God speaks to me. It's in the details. And unfortunately, many of them, many of those who kind of have this, this way of thinking, fall back every time on their past experiences. And I've seen this over the years. How, Pastor, the Lord did in 19 so and so this, and I experienced, had this experience. But they don't enter into all the riches and the spiritual blessings that God has for them. They always fall back on that experience. They are content with playing in the shallow waters, if I can use that analogy. They are ignorant with going deeper and comprehending the length and the height and the depth and the breadth and to know the love of Christ. You know what? I am. I'm not saying I know the love of Christ completely. I don't. But I want to go deeper. I want to know the love of Christ more. Because if I'm rooted and grounded in His love, deeper, I know I can go higher. Don't you want a, a pastor to love you more? So pray for me. That I'll be strengthened. Amen? But I, I, I desire so much for you to love, to, for me to love you, uh, for you to love me. <laughs> no sense. My desire is for us as a church. Not, I'm not saying we should become dogmatic. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we go deeper into the love of God and understand and comprehend what God has for us. All the fullness of God. That's what I'm praying now, when we analyze this inner man and we found that it is weak and it needs to be strengthened, that is what Paul is praying for. Paul knows all these truths. It starts with knowing the truth, but he knows we need the strength to appropriate it. He knows that. And no matter how weak you are, no matter how you feel, no matter how many times you feel, failed there is no excuse there is no excuse you should never get to a place where you say to yourself i cannot go deeper i cannot be stronger i cannot understand god is all sufficient you need to understand that god gives you strength according to the riches of his glory Now in close, if, if you and I are, con, are to contain, 
can I, I, hope, I, I hope that doesn't sound wrong, but if you and I are to contain the Lord Jesus within our lives and be filled with all the fullness of God, we need strength. Hello? We need to be strengthened in our inner man. We need to be strengthened by the Spirit of God in our inner man. And if we realize that these things that Paul is talking about are possibilities for all of us, and we desire them and ask according to the riches of His glory to reinforce us by Spirit, to pray that, that He has promised to do so, and God said He will do it. And Christ will dwell in our hearts by faith. So my question to you, and I'll pray then, this is what you need to answer yourself. Do you want to go deeper? Do you want to go deeper? Are you just happy with being where you are in your Christian life? Let's pray. Father, my prayer this morning is for each one of us to be strengthened by the power of your Spirit in our inner man, so that we may comprehend the riches of your glory, so that we may comprehend the height, the depth, the length, the breadth, and to know the love of God in Christ your Son. Lord, we, we, we won't completely fully grasp or understand how deep it goes. I think we will never know how wide it goes, how high it goes. But Lord, we want to go deeper into the love of God. We want our roots to grow deep into your love so that your love will be manifested in our lives because you change us from one glory to another glory as we see Christ and as we look at him. I pray this morning that you will change us. And Lord, may we be vessels that honor you in every way. We fall short so many times. Lord, we make excuses so many times. Help us, Lord, to rather make the effort, make the effort to really dive into your word and to live by faith, and not by sight. Pray that for each one of us in Jesus' wonderful name. Okay, it's, uh, I almost forgot, Murray, we're not done, Murray, Murray's going to talk quickly about the missionaries, so you can come, um, we just stop.